I'm Jack from jackstransmissions.com. We're glad to have you with us here today. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, clutch release, force, pivot balls, uh, throw out bearings, and why, why you should shim your pivot ball, um, and you know uh, other reasons why you really shouldn't. But um, what I have here is a training belt housing, throw out bearing release fork, slave cylinder, and clutch pedal assembly. Now, what we have here is uh, let's just imagine that this bell housing is bolted to the block. We have a new clutch in there. Everything's set up right, uh, but we're having problems where the throw up bearing release fork is sitting uh, past its halfway point over here, away from the slave cylinder. What you want to have is the throw up bearing release fork either sitting in the halfway point of this window here or closer to the slave. If it's away from the slave, that could cause some issues. What could happen is this throw up bearing fork is out this far. If you go to push the or push the pedal in, there's not going to be enough room here anymore for the throw up bearing fork to move. What's going to happen is it's going to go over and get jammed into the side of the bell housing, and you're not going to get any more clutch pedal travel out of it. Uh, a lot of people that have this issue uh, notice that when they adjust their pedal assembly properly, they have everything set up for the most uh, fluid transfer to the slave possible, the most movement possible. They go to push the pedal in about three quarters of the way down. It feels like there's something in the way. It feels like there's something stuck and won't go the rest of the way to the floor, or at least not very easily. You should have a smooth uh, pedal travel all the way to the floor. If you feel any resistance at the bottom, what's probably happening is the throttle bearing fork is hitting the bell housing. Um, I'll show that here, where we have this past the halfway point. It's away from the slave cylinder. Here on this side of the housing, I'll go to push this pedal in. And just before I get all the way to the end here, it just bottomed down against the bell housing. So what happens is, is I'm pushing this pedal down, and this is stopping short, and we're not getting the full travel out of the pressure plate right here for throwing it. So what we're going to do, well, this, this can be caused by several things. It could be a uh, flywheel, uh, not necessarily it has been uh, the step height is wrong. But anytime you resurface the flywheel, you're taking material off of it. When you take material off the flywheel, the pressure plate is going to move closer and closer to the block. So the more that moves closer to the engine, the more this is going to move over to the left here, away from the slave cylinder, because it has to move to adjust itself out to have the throw up bearing up against that pressure plate. So the more the pressure plate moves out, the more the throw up bearing moves out, the more the arm has to move this way and the more of a chance you have that it's going to hit the housing. Um, another thing too could be, uh, we know some clutch manufacturers are just, uh, things are just not as, as good as it should be. It's, it's not quite in the same spot as an OEM factory clutch would be. It's a little off. Uh, you know, it doesn't really sit in the same position. So you know, sometimes you can have a brand new flywheel in there, aftermarket flywheel, aftermarket pressure plate, clutch assembly. Everything is right and it'll still be over a little bit because you know, the manufacturer of the flywheel just had it, you know, just, just a little too close to the edge, it's a little off. But we know that some flywheel manufacturers do that. It's not deliberate, it's just, you know, one of the deals with dealing with aftermarket products. So, you know, it could be that. It could also be the uh, throw out bearing release fork could be worn. Um, I'm not sure if they really bend. They tend to snap before they'll bend, but a throw out bearing fork, uh, the way those wear out is the pivot ball and its pivot point of the fork will dig into the fork and it will wear that pivot area on the fork in and it wears it so nice that you can't tell that it's worn down. Uh, so, you know, a good practice, you know, anytime you change out your clutch assemblies, you change out the throw bearing fork. Uh, you know, that way you know the surface is new, uh, you have all the material in there, you have no wear, and you know the, the throw bearing uh, fork is going to be straight. Uh, another thing too is the, the throw bearing uh, 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 pivot ball or the fork pivot ball could be uh, a little worn out too, but that's very unlikely. And we do see some that are worn out every once in a while, but not really enough to really hurt anything. So, uh, but anyways, if you have all this stuff correct, and you have an aftermarket clutch in there, and it's still out this far like this, what you're going to have to do is pull the tranny off the engine again, and you're going to have to shim the pivot ball. And what shimming the pivot ball does is it moves the pivot ball out and moves the fork out a little bit. Uh, so basically, the you know, since the assembly has to go out farther with the aftermarket system, you're going to have to shim it out. And every time, it, depending on the thickness of the shim that you use, like if it's sticking out this much, if you put 
Let's say you put a washer in there from a uh, first generation uh, head bolts, uh, or uh, head bolt. Uh, those are fairly thick. What happens is if you see it sticking up this far and you put a washer that thick in there, you're probably going to have it come in about this far, which is just, that's just about right. Um, you know, you want it basically in the center line of this uh, hole right here, or or just a little closer to the slave that you're right on the money. So, you know, the way you shim the pivot ball is actually very simple. We work all happening around here. You want to remove the throw up bearing and the fork assembly here. Off. I'm just trying to do this quickly here. There we go. All right, now we have that out of the way. Here's our pivot ball. We'll just take a 14 millimeter socket, zip it off there, pull this off, put whatever washer you'd like on it. You put a lock washer in there. Um, you know, like I said, uh, you know, put anything you want. You may not want to put something in there too thick if you're just uh, if you're trying to get there, everything centered here. This is the first time you're doing it. So just take any, any, any size washer in there for now. You know, put it back on. Put the throw bearing, you know, fork, the throw bearing, everything back on there. Hold the tranny back onto the car and see where the throw bearing fork is sitting. If it's sitting in the middle or slightly towards the slave cylinder, you're good to go. If it's not, if it's still away from the slave cylinder, you may have to put a thicker shim in there. Uh, now this this seems to work on just about any Mitsubishi that we've run into. 3,000 GTs. Um, you know, front wheel drive, all wheel drive, turbo DSMs, uh, you know, it, basically anything with a hydraulic system like this Mitsubishi has, if it has an issue where the, the piece is hitting the bell housing, shim the, shimming the pivot ball will normally cure the problem if everything else is done correctly.